Howdy mates. Here's a part three video. How are we all doing? We're over still at the corkscrew swamp sanctuary. But I want to show you guys something real quick before I start to explain what it is that we're looking at. So without further ado, let's do this. So someone was actually very kind enough to already have a sort of like a telescope or more like a lens. Someone was generous enough to already have this set up among the boardwalk. So I want to show you guys a, it's a rare orchid found in the state of Florida. So here we go. We're going to see if this works. All right. So you guys can see it somewhat, but the lighting though makes it a little tricky. But you can somewhat see the orchid, like right, like right there. So what you were just looking at is something known as the elusive ghost orchid. Now, it's a very rare orchid that is found only in Southwest Florida, as well as Cuba. It's basically a type of epiphyte also known as an air plant. So it relies on the bald cypress as its host tree. And because ancient bald cypress has been, oh, mosquito, has been diminishing, the orchid has become even more rare. And, you know, in the early 1900s, the ghost orchid was highly sought after based on its beauty. And there was a point when the ghost orchid started to become endangered. So here we go, you guys. This talks a bit about the ghost orchid right here. So it is a leafless epiphyte and only up to 2000 of them remain. And usually this is the most ideal time to view them. So, this actually talks about what was being studied on it. You know, in terms of what exactly was pollinating the ghost orchid. For the longest time it was believed that the giant sphinx moth was the pollinator. However, though, as it approached summer 2018, people from National Geographic did a film on the ghost orchid and to capture images and even videos of who exactly was pollinating the ghost orchid. So after some time of filming, they came to find that in addition... The fig sphinx moth has the capability of also pollinating this particular orchid. So if you haven't seen it, it's actually a really cool film to watch on National Geographic if you haven't seen it. And of course, you know, National Geographic has an amazing reputation. So, there you have it. So, by the way, it is completely illegal to poach these types of orchids just because of how rare they are. And the thing is, once they're gone and extinct, there's no turning back. You can't bring them back to life. So essentially where we're walking at now is we're now in the Cypress Swamp. So Corkscrew Sanctuary is known to have the largest 
old growth forest network of bald cypress. So as I mentioned in my introductory video, much of the bald cypress that we see in this particular section of the sanctuary range from five to 600 years old. So you figure even when the Spanish settlers were coming down here around that same time, these very same bald cypress spanned this area. Isn't that amazing or what? These bald cypress have basically seen a lot in their lifetime. So yeah, bald cypress is essentially a type of conifer. So it is a gymnosperm. They do produce cones. But they're kind of like, they're, they're ball-like clone, clones. They're ball-like cones, as opposed to the more lengthy ones that we commonly associate. So another characteristic of bald cypress is they're one of the only known deciduous conifer trees that exist in the natural world. What I mean by that is since they are deciduous, as it approaches into the dry season, getting closer to winter, they will actually shed their leaves, or I should say needles that they have. There's not many known conifers that do such a thing at all. So it's truly a blessing to see some of the oldest known bald cypress in the world. And that's why the ghost orchid has also become very rare. Jeez, these mosquitoes, man. They're relentless. The ghost orchid needs to have an older bald cypress tree as a host plant. Or as a host. You won't find a ghost orchid on a younger bald cypress. But reason being in the past why bald cypress was so highly sought after for lumber is the fact that bald cypress it's one of the only known types of trees that are actually rot resistant and pest resistant too. So it's a very what you call durable wood. So it made it very desirable for construction and even railroad ties. But ever since this became a protected park, logging of this area became forbidden. Look at this. They are truly majestic. So by the way, mates, if you haven't come out here to visit, it's totally worth it, you guys. Because you, you just get to see an amazing ecosystem that is really unmatched. There's really no other ecosystem like it. And the best part is, this is a western extension of the Everglades. Because at one point, the Everglades used to be a much larger network than what it is today. Due to development, of course. So, I think this is a good point to wrap up my video. My uh, arm is actually starting to hurt a little bit. <laughs> Time to give it a little rest. So... All right, you guys, take it easy. Enjoy your Wednesday, and journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.